Hey guys, it's Izzy here and today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up. Last month I had my biggest reading month of the year. This month I've had my smallest reading month of the year. Let's get into the video. The first book that I finished in the month of December is The Holiday Swapped by Maggie Knox. So this is an author duo. So I'm assuming one author wrote one character's point of view and the other author wrote the other characters, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Let's talk about the characters. Out of this, at the start of the story, I really liked Cass's character, but that was quick to change and Charlie became my favorite. And as the plot went on and on, I didn't only prefer Charlie as a character. I also preferred her love interest. Probably because just because in general he's more my type of man. He kind of looks like the guy I have a crush on. So <laughs> I preferred him as the love interest. And then I feel like Cass just got more problematic and annoying as the story went on. I felt like she was just causing a lot of issues that were unnecessary. So if y'all know which writer wrote which character can you let me know because I really want to know who wrote Charlie's um point of view because I really did enjoy those chapters I didn't not enjoy Cass's chapters as I said she started out as my favorite character but just as the story progressed Charlie became my favorite point of view so I would love to know which author wrote those so I can go check out her books so obviously the Los Angeles setting was nothing new but at times you could tell that the writers were Canadian and not from California as just making it seem like the trek from Los Angeles up to Northern California was nothing and all of that when <laughs> really it is quite a bit of a drive. And But I did really like the small town setting because some chapters were in Los Angeles and then some were in the small like hometown. I really liked the small town vibes and atmosphere that were in the holiday swap. For writing, the chapters were very long page length wise, but they read very quickly. And so I could easily read 50 pages in one sitting. And that is so nice just to breeze through a book and not have to be worrying about oh when's this chapter going to end so it, it just amazed me how quick i was able to get through these like 20 page chapters which usually i do not like my chapters to be over 15 pages but this read very quick so i did not have a problem with the chapter links at all so the plot did lack logic at times i felt like the characters should have been upfront about their like switching lives but then again, that would take a lot of plot away from the story, like if we didn't have all that confusion. As I said before, I prefer Charlie's plot to Cass's. So I want more from these characters and I really enjoyed like the plot ideas that we got from the last chapter of the book. So I do hope that Maggie Knox, that they do plan to write a next book in this series because I think it'd be really fun to follow not just these two characters again, but some of the side characters as well. But if you want like the synopsis for these books, you need to check out the TBR video that I posted at the start of the month. That's where I go into synopsises and then synopsises, synopsi, I don't know. <laughs> and then in my wrap up videos, I just talk about my thoughts on these books. But yeah, usually I am, romance is really hit or miss for me, but this was a hit. It was a four out of five stars and I really enjoyed it. And I will definitely pick up more books by this author too. So the next book is a 4.75 out of five stars. And that is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang. So this is a sequel. And <laughs> I am tabbing this series and as you can see I did put quite a few tabs in this one. I did the audiobook for this um, story and that's how I will be doing the full series. I, I will read the third one next month in January. I need to purchase it on my next Barnes & Noble trip which is really nice when you have that Christmas money. You can go in and just spend it all on books. I'm not going to spend. Uh, Barnes & Noble I will probably spend some of it but the majority of it I am going to buy like designer clothes because 
I want to do that. <laughs> let's get into what my thoughts on the Dragon Republic were. Let's talk about the character. So in the first book, Rin was annoying and not a likable character at all for me, but I did enjoy reading from her, but I didn't like her. The same for like Cersei Lannister and A Song of Ice and Fire. I felt the same how I felt about Rin in this book. But we really connect with her as the story goes on. And by the end of this book, I was completely feeling her emotions come off the page. The anger, the anxiety. You could really, really feel it just coming off the page. And you would feel these emotions is what I'm trying to say. Like I would get so angry when Ren was angry. Or I'd get anxious when she was anxious. The emotions just fly off the pages of this book. But one of my complaints about the Poppy War, which is the first book in this series, was that the side characters were not developed enough. Now with the psych, I still think that is kind of the case. I was still getting them confused. But some of our more um, like Katai, I feel like he got developed a lot more. And I felt like the side characters in this book were just overall stronger than in the first book. Vizra, I really liked him as a character. A lot of just the dragon, um, the house, house, I don't, the dragon lord, like his family. I really liked getting to read from them. Very reminiscent of the Lannisters in A Song of Ice and Fire as they are like the most powerful family and whatnot. I really did enjoy them. So the side characters did improve in this one, but so, like the psych, they, I don't think they did. Let's talk atmosphere now. So we really got to explore more of this Chinese inspired world in the second novel as the characters were exploring more of the world and going to different locations and cities. So I really liked how the atmosphere of each city, um, or not atmosphere, the ecosystem of like each city or province really, um, went into how the politics and strategy and all worked for those locations. I feel like that is really realistic and just, but just get to um, see new locations, new ecosystems and all is really nice to see in a fantasy novel. And we had more nationalities introduced. We had the um, people inspired by the British and Mongolians. So it was cool to see the world expand even more outside of China and just go into like the West north and all of that. I don't know a lot about Eastern Asian at this point in history. This is inspired by the 20th century China. I don't know a lot about that but this book really has inspired me to research more of it. I have been looking at the Wikipedia pages so but I am very careful because I don't want to get spoiled for the third book but after I read that I'm definitely going to go on a deep dive of learning more about China's history and Eastern Asia just in general. So let's talk writing now. I do think R.F. Kuang's writing has improved tremendously since the first book. It wasn't bad before but I think you can definitely see how she has grown as an author. So the first book was her debut novel and that just blows my mind that that was a debut novel. Like how? And she's only like 25 She's amazing, a genius. <laughs> so a lot of these paragraphs just really made me think and just think about the morales of war and whatnot, which I will touch on later when we talk about the plot. But they just left me thinking afterwards. But my one complaint is that R. Kwong still hasn't perfected the pacing. Um, in the first book, it was the first part was um, really slow when Ren is at the academy. Then the second part, we go to war and it's really fast paced, and that. That can definitely be seen here. I think the like second quarter of this book was very slow. It wasn't boring, but it just, you could tell that it was moving slower than the rest of the story. So she still has not perfected pacing, but it's, that's a very small complaint for me and literally my only complaint. So it's not a huge deal to me. And this one did not lag as bad as the first book. So I do think maybe the third book, maybe she has perfected it because it has gotten better and better as the um, story has continued. So we'll see what I think of the third one. So the plot was the best part for me. This one is a lot more politically and stra strategically driven rather than just action. We still do have a lot of action, so don't worry. But there were so much more politics and I love political intrigue in books. So I loved getting to see it. And I love that I love it in fantasy novels, I should say. So I love that this book has so much more politics and strategy. Thank you, Katai, for the strategy. So we did get a lot more of that. If you are not an action reader, you will still enjoy this there. But if you are an action reader, yeah, you still will enjoy it as well because we still do have action scenes. This is whole series is about a war. But we do have a lot more of the behind the scenes stuff as well. So a lot of people think this book is darker than the first book. I don't think so. It's still a dark book, but it's the Poppy War is the darkest thing I've ever read. 
so the dragon republic is not that dark in comparison or maybe just because i've read the first book now that nothing tends to shock me as much um by darkness but it is still very dark so do be sure to check out the trigger warnings if you plan on picking up this book so with darkness obviously there's a lot of your morales play into it so i think the main plot point of the dragon republic is the morales i can never say that word so like my bad if i'm mispronouncing it um, but the morales of war, are you doing the right thing if you're, the people you're fighting against, if they did it, it's wrong, but if you do it, it's right. Like, there's just a lot of thinking about war and thinking, is it really worth it? And all of that, and I did really enjoy that. So there are plot twists that I didn't see coming, but I'm still, like, thinking of how, I, I think I know how it's gonna end, but now, like, I thought I knew, but now I'm not too sure. So I have no idea how this story is going to end, so I can't wait for the next book to see how Arf Kwong will wrap it all up. Like, I want to read the next book, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't want the series to end, but obviously I'm going to read the next book, like, literally next week. I don't know if it'll be next week, but I am going to read it next month and finish up this trilogy. There is a novella that comes between this one and the next book, so I don't know if I should pick it up. If you guys have read it, let me know. I should pick it up. So I do have two other books that I am currently reading. So I should finish them by the end of the year, the end of the month, and that being The Sisters of the Winter Wood. This is a young adult um, Eastern European inspired fantasy novel. It's mainly magical realism, so not heavy fantasy like the Poppy War series. Um, it's an average read for me right now. I don't know um, what I'm going to think of it because when it's average it could go either way like it could get really bad or it could get really good you never know but right now sin of three star and I'm about 40% of the way into that. The other book I'm reading is Dragonfly and Amber which is the sequel to Outlander the second book in the series. I think there's currently like nine books out in the main series and then there are like spin-off series but this is in the main series and this is the second book. I am enjoying it. Um, I do think it is better than the first book so I have been focusing a lot on fantasy sequels this month it seems like. But yes, I am really enjoying that and I think Claire has become a lot less annoying as a character. In the first book I was like, oh my gosh, she's annoying. And then in the second book I just, I feel like, I feel like everybody's developed a lot more as characters. And it's a really great book. I've seen the TV show so it's um, basically word for word exactly what happened on the TV show and book are like the same, which I'm pretty amazed by. Um, you don't really see that that often. I mean, there are some slight changes, but nothing too crazy. But those are all of the books that I read in December. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have a happy new year. I will be here in 2022, hopefully. <laughs> Knock on some wood that um, nothing crazy happens. But yeah, my YouTube channel hopefully will still be here. And I will be uploading... Um, three videos a week. That will be two on this channel, one on my ASMR channel, so be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell to be notified when all my videos go live and rate and comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!